always kind of laughed at the notion, and I've known this for well over a decade. <clears throat> Science, I use that word within air quotes, talks about things being, is it magnetic? Like iron, right? Iron will jump to a magnet. Is it ferromagnetic? Is it diamagnetic? Is it paramagnetic? <laughs> Once again, when talk about a differentiation between like ice water and steam, everything is magnetoreactive. Um, when I made the video a couple of years ago about talking about uh, getting more gold out of uh, the spillway from uh, gold extraction by using magnets, it causes the gold to decelerate in the, uh, especially baby powder gold, by using uh, magnetic vortices, by alternating the magnets. And people will say, what are you talking about? You can use magnets. By the way, this has been done successfully now for years. You can't get, gold is, doesn't react to a magnet. It's like, yeah, it does. Just because it is not ferromagnetic doesn't mean it's not magnetoreactive. Everything is magnetoreactive. And I showed people in videos, I don't know if I need to do it again, I need to whip out that giant monster magnet in my basement. It's a huge sucker. Using bismuth, which is the universe's most diamagnetic element. Diamagnetic basically means hates magnetism, right? It is magnetoreactive by actually uh, exposing magnetic zones. And you can only see magnetic zones on a large magnet. And the number of people that have a monster magnet, yay large, is like slim and none. It is repelled at the centrifugal edge of the magnet, bismuth, pure bismuth, but it is slightly reactive and accelerates towards the center of a magnet where we actually have increasing inertia and acceleration. I've said this a million times and yet people don't get it. Well, a lot of people do. It's the conjugate nature of the entire universe from one end of this universe to the next is magnetodielectric, respectively. It is the geometry of force and motion, i.e. the toroidal geometry of the three-dimensional S-curve and extrapolation, which of course makes up the torus, and that of the hyperboloid, or the hourglass shape of increasing inertia and acceleration. This apple is kind of toroidal shaped, yep. By the way, a vortex is only looking at one side of a torus. People love to talk about vortices. Everybody is fascinated by vortices. I was out at my farm yesterday. I was looking at a water vortex that was naturally occurring in the spillway on uh, my creek. Everybody loves looking at vortex. When you look at a vortex, you're just looking at one side of a torus, obviously so. Anyway, this uh, toroidal geometry, the negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid, and the negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus. Fundamentally, we only have two movements in the entire universe. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Mother Nature is really simple when I kind of humorously said that she's a hairy armpit chick with a grass skirt and muddy feet without a calculator. Yes, she only understands pressure mediation. Pressure mediation is just a fancy way of saying water flows downhill, right? The nature of the magnetic field of centrifugal force and motion is the fundamental force of the entire universe. Interestingly enough, ever seen the um, videos of nukes going off out in the South Pacific, you see a rising mushroom cloud. The only reason that mushroom cloud rises is because it is super hot and hot air rises. So the stem on that mushroom cloud, which of course looks like a mushroom, rises up as of course is the debris or water that's actually sucked, sucked up in it. But I mean that's you're talking about like a fissionable uranium or plutonium mass, not too much bigger than this. This, by the way, this is a, a rubber-coated solid lead ball. It's extremely heavy. It's a torus. You know, other than the mushroom cloud rising because it's hot air and the actual debris in the stem of the mushroom, you're looking at the fundamental geometry, of course, the torus. It is a torus. Making things simple such that anybody could understand it, even younger minds the things that we see in nature, such as gravity. I'll have when people say, gravity doesn't exist. Like, well, I've said many countless times that gravity is an autonomous entity doesn't exist. Human beings don't understand that so-called gravity and so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism at all, are one and the exact same thing, along with a list of other things. I said, you know, jump off of a ladder five or ten feet. You know, what is the phenomena that you're witnessing? People, gravity doesn't exist. Well, gravity is also, too, not a force. I, I, it always makes me cringe when I hear somebody talk about the force of gravity. People say, well, uh, gravity is an acceleration. Even one of my 
teachers in high school, he was halfway smart. He said, well, gravity is not a force, he said. Gravity is an acceleration. You know, acceleration of what, by what, due to what. You know, acceleration is the denotative, actually, it's the explic explicative uh, denouncement of what is seen. Well, this lead ball is accelerating towards the Earth. Well, what is that phenomenon? We can dismiss gravity all we want, but what is that phenomenon itself? Everything, by the way, operates off of the right-hand rule. When I say that, it actually confuses people. We say, well, what is anti-gravity? I we'll say, well, what about the right-hand rule? Why do you think there is a specific geometry of simplex pressure mediation between the two fundamental uh, principles of the entire universe, one being increasing inertia, we could just say inertia, and one of force. There's two fundamental uh, principles, inertia and force. Force is the release, and or dis release or dissipation of energy. Inertia is increasing energy and acceleration. Growth, life, one is death, the release of that energy. The other one, of course, is the entropy. We could say exothermic and endothermic, but then they start confusing people. But Magnetic attraction, by the way, doesn't exist. And the fundamental thing that I've mentioned many times that people also too don't get is that if there are only two bodies in the universe, they say, well, they're accelerating towards one another. That's fundamentally a gravity. Well, they're never accelerating towards one another. They're actually accelerating towards the lowest or null pressure point between the two. This is nothing other than ether torsion. Magnets do not accelerate towards one another either. Neither do gravitational masses. You say gravitational masses, we could just say masses. You can actually see this underneath the supercell or the ferro cell. You can actually see a null void um, of uh, lowest pressure that these uh, magnets are accelerating towards. People say, well, they're magnets, they're accelerating. This is therefore magnetic attraction. This has existed for many, many thousands of years. Every high school teacher, every physics teacher, every so-called PhD professor of theoretical physics with magnetic attraction. First, when magnets accelerate towards one another, they're not accelerating towards one another, they're accelerating towards the lowest null point between the two, no different than masses, like in the Cavendish experiment. That is not magnetism, that is inertia. Just because magnets are accelerating towards one another doesn't mean that what is going on is the force of magnetism. That's not force at all, it's the complete opposite of force, which is, of course, inertia. That starts to confuse people, but it shouldn't confuse, shouldn't confuse people at all. We have fundamentally two things seen in the entire universe, and there are several things that fall under increasing inertia, or we could say motions or acceleration towards inertia. Even like my smartest physics teacher, who, you know, moderately smart, but still not that smart. You say, well, gravity's not a force. Good, good, gravity's not a force. Well, it's an acceleration. Well, acceleration is not an explanation, nor is it a denotation of what is going on. It is not. It's no different than talking about AC generators generating power. Well, AC generators don't generate power. There's no conversion between wind and electricity. There's no conversion between hydroelectric and energy. Not. It's an arch form. Given a temporal variable, creates the manifestation of, like uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz said, uh, huge AC generators uh, were churning up the ether. That's all a so-called AC generator does. They don't generate power at all. They manifest it, which is a huge distinction. Anyway, this motion towards counter space, or what should be correctly called inertia, the phenomena that people are aware of, um, the most simple ones, gravity, so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetic attraction at all, dielectric or electrostatic uh, charge, which is a motion towards counter space, no different than lightning. Lightning is a discharge in counter space. It's the release of pressure. Lightning discharge. You ever seen uh, ultra high speed uh, film of uh, lightning discharge? You can see that it's a discharge in counter space. Black holes are another one. Of course, they're not actually holes, and the reason why they call them black. By the way, a black hole, as I've said many countless times, is a supermass with no magnitude, which we have no parallel for. Here on this Earth, that's where dielectricity overtakes magnetism's ability to keep anything in the visible universe. The only thing, only reason why anything exists in the entire universe, because every atom is nothing other than a magnetodielectric dynamo. The one thing science does get right, and accurately, however they never explain it, is that every atom is 99.99999% empty space. Kind of like a supergiant balloon with a 
couple of super tiny BBs at the center, right? I'm not, by the way, I've never denied nuclear particles, protons and neutrons, but by the way, all neutrons become protons after they're released from the nucleus, which means there's only one fundamental particle. All the experts of field theory, by the way, have said the same thing. There's no such thing as an electron. Even the so-called discoverer of the electron principle, J.J. Thompson, said the principle of the electron was one unit of dielectric induction. Tesla said there's no such thing as an electron particle. Charles Proudy Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside, Eric Dollard, on and on. So all these geniuses agree there's no such thing as an electron particle. Yet, due to atomism, of course, if you're a hammer, everything's a nail. If you're an atomist, everything's a particle. They say, well, we got the photon, the light particle, and we have the discharge, the charge-carrying particle, i.e. the electron. That's what these so-called scientists state. And, of course, those are misnomers. Those are brain farts of uh, current and materialistic quantum and relativity, which is atomistic. Because these people are not scientists, what they are is mathematicians, actually. So, two fundamental principles of the universe, inertia and force. Um, you ever taken your hand out of side of a, a box of uh, styrofoam beads and stick into your hand? I mean, that's no different than gravity. That's no different than so-called magnetic attraction. I'm trying to make this video very, very simple. We have two fundamental principles, inertia and force. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, inertia comes first. Force is a release of the energy. Because magnetism is the dielectric field. It's no different than saying ice is a field of water, even though ice is not a field of water. It's a, uh, it's a modality of water due to temperature, obviously. So, well, that's hard stuff. It's like a rock, and this stuff's wet and, and d different, like a child might say. It's like, no, they're one and the same thing. We have this word because human beings love to create new words for new phenomena. But the phenomena are usually linked, but we have we got a word for steam, we got a word for ice, we got a word for water. We have another word for dielectricity under the loss of its energy or inertia, and that word is magnetism. Yeah? Magnetism is the universe's most fundamental force. The effective force is the after effect of a divergent magnetic field. Think of a toroidal field. Think of, of, uh, of zero point, uh, pre-Cartesian, pure potential. Yeah? Now think of the release of that energy or inertia, which manifests as a three dimension. You want to know the force vector of magnetism, the release of a fundamental force vector. Just say one unit of, uh, of uh, dielectric capacitance released. Take a piece of wire, bend it like an S, and then take each end and bend it inverse to one another. What you'll have is the extrapolation of the three dimensional geometry of the inner part of a torus or a donut shape. The after effect of a divergent force vector i.e. the toroidal uh, geometry of uh, magnetism, is two things. These two things don't exist, ultimately. They exist conventionally. That is space and time. Space, as Nikola Tesla accurately said, has no properties because space is not a thing. Space is no different than a shadow. Sh space is the after effect of a divergent magnetic field. Time is not a thing either. Every ancient culture said time is a number four, and the only number missing in the first five digits of the Fibonacci sequence is the number four, one, one, two, three, five. Time means death, because in like Chinese, Japanese, the word for four means death. Time, if time is always equal since ancient cultures. They've known this, ancient masters. Every ancient master knew that uh, time was the number four, and four, uh, the word for four in these uh, ancient languages, more than a few of them, means death, because if you undergo time, then you're, uh, you have a beginning in time and therefore an end in time. Anything that experiences time or can be measured in time must experience death and it must be temporal. Time is only a measure. Time is not a thing whatsoever. Neither is space. A shadow is not a thing either. However, a shadow is a noun in the dictionary. But a shadow is an absence of a light. When you stand in a shadow, you feel cold. It must be something. Well, it is something by comparison relative to standing in the light and feeling the heat of the sun, right? No, shadow is not a thing at all. Shadow has no principality. Neither does space. This is the reason why Nikola Tesla said, this is the only time Nikola Tesla foams at the mouth. There's this notion of relativity and quantum. The space is something that can be bent or altered or it has properties, it affects things, and that's not true at all. Neither does time. Time exists relatively, but it doesn't exist ultimately at all. Time is completely mutable. Now, you can't step in the same waters twice, you can't go back in time, but you can freeze time for one object while the other object goes through time 
as it conventionally does as we experience it. And this, of course, is how the uh, magnetic seed exposure experiment works because uh, just like this apple, which has a proportionality of 1 to phi, this would be the south pole of a magnet. It actually has a phase disparity due to geomagnetic precession where there is compressed time and a, a rarefaction of time. And it affects water, which is a polar molecule. Water is a polar molecule. You take a polar object like a magnet, which has this phase disparity. So this is why you end up with radically different results for seed experimentation due to magnetic exposure. But that's a matter for another topic. So fundamentally, two principles of the entire universe only, inertia and force. That force is a loss of inertia. What we call magnetism is no different than dielectricity, except under a different modality attribution, just like ice is no different than water, except it has completely different properties, so on and so forth, as we all know between ice and water. This word that we give magnetism to, the fundamental force, is just inertia under loss of energy, which manifests as a three-dimensional force vector. The universe really is that simple. Everything is simplex pressure mediation. Once again, the motions towards counter space, i.e. E. increasing inertia, gravity. The phenomenon we call gravity, yeah? Magnetic attraction, which is not magnetic attraction at all. It's not magnetism. It's dielectric acceleration. The only distinction, by the way, between so-called magnetic attraction and gravity is one is point source acceleration. The other one is non-point source or incoherent mutual mass acceleration. But they're never accelerating towards one another, not in the case of two bodies, not in the case of uh, two magnets. They're accelerating towards the lowest null point no, lowest no point of, uh, of inertia, i.e. of torsion, the absence of torsion between the two. This is readily visible. Now, under conventional observation, we say, well, this is gravitational acceleration. We've got two objects in space. They're accelerating towards one another. Well, that's conventional observation, but they're not. It looks that way. All calculations are that way. All observations, all algorithms say, well, they're accelerating towards one another. They're going to hit at so-and-so speed. They're not. They're accelerating towards a null point between the two. You know, it completely redefines both gravity and so-called magnetic attraction. When you understand the fact that these things are not accelerating towards one another, they are not after each other. What they're accelerating towards is the erasure of that torsion which exists between the both of them and which is being erased at this null point right here. That is what they're accelerating towards, not towards each other. Yet every branch of science, every teacher you've ever had has said that, continues to say that, it is a lie. This is easily visible underneath the supercell, or the ferrocell, no matter which one you call it. They're two different types of the same unit. They're not accelerating towards one another. That is an important distinction that makes a huge difference in understanding. When you understand that gravity and so-called magnetic attraction are one and the same thing, you understand that lightning is the discharge in the counter space, you understand electrostatic acceleration, or like most people have witnessed there too, static cling, yeah? Like you can take a sock and it will stick to your hand after you get it out of the dryer and there's like low humidity in the air. You can't get the sock off your hand. You ever had to do that before you peel the sock off your hand or those styrofoam balls that are inside the packing material? stuck to your hands like you can't shake them off they're stuck to your hand what do you think that glue is what do you think is holding your hand to those little styrofoam balls fundamentally two things inertia and force dielectricity and magnetism and those two things are reducible once again because magnetism is just the extrinsic attributional release of energy or inertia that defines dielectricity or counter space i.e. Uh, ether torsion, the three-dimensional force vector that makes up the toroidal geometry of magnetism. Once again, the hyperboloid and the torus. Both are the negative image of the other. Respectively, that is the conjugate geometry of the entire universe without fail from one corner to the next. And that is something not a single science teacher, not a single professor on this earth either knows or would ever tell you because they themselves don't know. Yes, a fat, bald, tattooed guy on YouTube with a video actually understands that, and these people do not. And yes, I am correct. And no, it is not my theory or feeling or belief. That is the way the entire universe works, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. End of story. 
not even up for debate. Not that I'm opposed to debating it. That is the way it works. If you ever want to contact me, everybody keeps asking me. The uh, email is in the description below. Any donations always warmly welcome. Or just email me, tell me how much you hated the video and why you think I'm wrong. However, I'm not wrong. Lux Severitas.